first city. We get tax for utilities, we get tax for services, public, emergencies, and it will deny us emergency services. Because there's no way uh, an emergency vehicle can go down a 15-foot road that's not even properly been identified or addressed. And we've been in a situation where we've had emergency calls for our neighbors, and we make two calls, one to the emergency services and the other one to the nearest neighbor that's available so that we can escort these services to the required, uh, the person requesting the service. And we're using right now lateral, the Juan de Herrera lateral, which is not a proper and unsafe for any public vehicle to go through. And I just hope that you all will consider before you adopt any plan as is, if you haven't seen it, to look at it and take into consideration our concerns and the concerns of the city of Socorro, the future development of this city. And instead of rock walls being built around the area, we're proposing to build a road to the new East Lake Road that's being built right now, which will benefit both the developer and of the existing residents. So before you adopt anything, take your time and consider. Look into it more carefully. You know, developers, they want to maximize their profit. I don't blame them. But you're in the city of Socorro. We're growing, and we need to look to the future. And don't forget us. We've been here. I've been here 44 years. That's it. Thank you. Jack Martin. Good afternoon. My name is Jack Martin, and we're property owners in that same area. And uh, we're here to request that you be very cautious on how you think about building out there because we really don't have the access to get into and out with our tractors or anything else. I don't know how long those little farms will be. We might be here another 20 years, 50 years, I don't know. But right now as it is, uh, it's, it, a tractor is going to be hard to get back there with that proposed uh, fence that he wants to put in there. Uh, I guess it's a rock wall fence that they're gonna put. He did kind of show us a, a little bit of a, a print, but it wasn't approved or anything, and we talked a little bit with the, the, the developer. So, but without no seeing no real paperwork or anything like that, it's hard for us to make any decisions at all. You know, um, he offered to put an entrance and I did ask him if he would put the, if they would go as far as to put a, a fire hydrant on one of the where he wanted to or as close as possible maybe we could get water I know it's hard to get water and when you get into other people's property but as close as possible if not actually at the very edge of his development and nothing's in writing everything's been yak 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 by all parties and but I'm kind of confused but I would like to see there be an entrance that uh, that everybody can use and get into and I ask that you guys think about it very carefully and keep us from being landlocked thank you very much and I appreciate your time and as and also this is a for, for about the third or fourth time we've met so I don't like I say, I don't know how much of it is yak, 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 and how much is fact. So when we get, if we can sit down and get facts together, I think it's not a bad deal. We should be able to work something out. And with your help, I know we will. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Letty Ray. Uh, my name is Leticia Rey, and um, I'm here because I know the development is going to occur, 
and there's nothing you can do about that. It is going to happen. Uh, I'm not against it. We are going to be obtaining utilities because that's going to help us. Uh, but I do not want to remain landlocked. That's about the only thing I do not want to remain landlocked. Uh, we do want need a proper entrance. Um, it's very much needed because we've always used the dirt roads. And if it's raining or anything like that, then we, we have no roads. <laughs> so for emergency vehicles or anything like that, then we have no proper entrance. Thank you. Thank you. John Thank you. Salcedo. My name is Jose Sosado, Joe Sosado. Uh, I would like to postpone this project. We don't have the city representatives. We don't have anybody to represent us. It's only us and, and we need somebody to represent us. So we're alone and Sorry. we're gonna get help. I cannot hear you. Can you speak up, sir? Yes, we cannot hear you. <coughs> that uh, I'll, I'll, I would like to postpone this project because we don't have anybody to represent us. And we are alone and we need help. That's all. Thank you. Enrique Escobar. Claudia Garcia. Hi, good afternoon. Uh, Claudia Garcia. Um, first, um, he wants to put like a rock wall and we're not gonna be able to get any access like emergency vehicles or the farm equipment. And he, want us to give, he wants to give us like a 15 foot uh, road in which I don't think is um, the farm equipment, some of the farm equipment is not gonna fit through there. And he's gonna put houses there. You think it's safe for the kids to be passing through there? Or I mean, no emergency vehicle is gonna be able to go through there. And we wanna also to sum up um, if he can put something so we can access that, um, so we can get the utilities also. But the first thing that we don't wanna get landlocked because if not, he's gonna block us with the rock wall so we're not gonna have any access. So before you guys do any decisions, you guys can take a look at the, what he's trying to do. And I mean, don't forget us, I, even though it's a small, we're small, like six, seven, six, seven neighbors, but I mean, I know he's gonna put a lot more houses, but please don't forget us because we need access. We're paying for taxes and everything. So if, if any of you guys can want, go and see how, can, how, if you guys can go through there and get with the farm equipment, or the emergency vehicles, so you guys can see what's going on. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Enrique Escobar. Good evening, Mayor Council. My name is Enrique Escobar. I'm the developer of the property. Uh, I was requested by the city to meet with the neighbors. The engineer and myself went, met with the neighbors at their house that is currently, all their properties are landlocked, currently, okay? They requested if we could help them out. Apparently I didn't explain myself correctly or they didn't understand, okay? Number one, I take exception to two things. I don't speak anything I don't do, and I don't put money ahead of neighbors, okay? When the city of Socorro needed three acres to put Old Waco Road, or now East Lake Valley, I gave them to Socorro. I didn't charge it, I gave it. When these people approached me after I was ordered, by, ordered, asked <laughs> by, by, by the city to go meet with them, I told them I would give them access to a paved road to the end of their property. I would bring utilities, water, sewer, cable, telephone, to the edge of their property. I would put up, a, a fire hydrant at the edge of my property abutting to their property. They have, between them, a 15-foot easement they have, not I, 
that connects their property that are presently landlocked. I have a preliminary plan that we're gonna submit to the city that shows paved road, sidewalk, going to the end of the location that they picked where they wanted the point to be of access so they could distribute themselves through their property. So as of today, I have kept my promise and done everything that I told I was gonna do and everything that they requested, okay? So I have plans for you if you wanna see them. The engineers right there will submit them to the city, but we have access, utilities, water, everything to the edge of their property. I cannot go into their property to do something for free for them. But as to us, we're losing lots, we're adding paving, we're adding concrete, and we're not charging anybody. We're being good neighbors, okay? We intend to be in Socorro for a long time. Any ask, any questions I could answer? Public hearing. Yeah, public hearing. Cool. Thank, Thank you, sir. Seven ten public hearing is now closed. Item number 24, second reading and adoption of an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of tracks 8 and 15, <coughs> Block 4 Socorro Grant from A1 Agricultural to a combination of C2 General Commercial and R2 Medium Density Residential for a proposed subdivision. Make a motion, motion to, to approve. approve for discussion. Can somebody second? Ms. Villalobos? Um, I, I guess what I really would like to do, I, I, I can hear that the neighbors are somewhat upset and um, I would like to table this item or postpone this item and actually have several of us or all of us or some of us go down there and meet with both the developer and the residents to show them exactly what you are proposing and why they feel differently and, 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 and make a better decision that way. May I answer that? Can we have the presentation from Mr. Terrazas first? Uh, Mayor and Council, I just want to make a clarification. I, I think we're ve veering off the topic. We're not talking about the subdivision. We're talking about the rezoning of Tract 8 and 15. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is, uh, they're requesting, this is a second reading and adoption of the ordinance to rezone Tracts 8 and 15. And this is for a proposed subdivision. Uh, but like I said, we're not talking about the subdivision. We haven't seen the preliminary plat. There is a conceptual plan out there, but we're not, this is not the case. It's the rezoning. Uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval to comply with the previous sign agreement um, that the owner had with the city and with a dedication of the right of way for the expansion of Old Waco Tanks Road. Thank you. They still, we still haven't seen the preliminary plat because they haven't submitted it. That's why we're not discussing about the subdivision. It's only the, the land use. Yeah, for, for, for whatever. Um, right. Your, the issues about access and emergency vehicle access and being on the those are all legitimate. And that council has to consider those, has the right to consider those, has the right to make decisions on that basis. When but you do now, a plat, that's what you do when you have a plat and you're considering a plat. Right now, you're just I, I guess that irrespective of the discussion that we have as far as um, the zoning change, I think that this is something that uh, we, that the developers, the team or developer in this case, uh, need. Right, right. right. But there's, but no, no, yes, and I understand that. I guess what, what I'm trying to say is that your neighbors are talking to you. And so, and so I think that at this point, it, uh, it would behoove everyone involved to have a sit down um, as, as this process continues. So 
there are two things that are going on, two different things. One is the rezoning, which is separate and apart from the actual platting of the property. That's the, those are the conversations you all need to have in that process. As far as council is concerned, we're doing the, just the rezoning, which is, which is a totally different aspect of this process, all right? So that, that's my comments, those are my comments. Mr. Rodriguez? Um, <clears throat> my colleague took the words right out of my mouth. Um, no, one of the things is, is that uh, uh, for Ms. Mrs. Garcia, um, Valencia, Martinez, Leti, Mr. Saucedo, um, your representative one, you can call them, call her. Um, if she doesn't answer, you're more than free to call me and we'll tackle this issue. I have gone over there and I've seen your property. I know you're landlocked and I understand that. Um, but uh, if your rep does not answer you, you're more than free to call me or the mayor. Um, and we'll, we'll, we'll have conversations with the developer, you know. He, he seems a genuine guy, you know. He, he, he sounds that he's willing to work with you guys, you know. The conversation should continue, you know. But for now, we're going to tackle this and, and uh, we'll make a motion and, and see how it goes. And this is just the first step. Mr. Duran? I think that um, what we're doing is just approving his right to build houses. When he brings the plat to us, you all will not be forgotten. Your, your concerns will be addressed because we decide the final plat. It, he brings the design, we decide whether it is in the best interest of the city. So your concerns will be addressed at that time. So don't, don't think that because we approve tonight, if we approve, that your concerns are not being met. We've heard you, we understand. And when we see the plat, which we haven't seen yet, we haven't seen what plans he has. If you all are not taken care of, believe me, we will address that at that time. So don't feel that just because we approved tonight that you're gonna be left out in the open. You're not. Aye. Maria Reyes is absent. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perez? Aye. And Ivan Colon Villalobos? Yes. Item number 25, public hearing of an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of the Coral Master Plan and rezoning of lots 104 and 105, Moon Edition number 2, Bree Plant located at 166 and 172 Moon Road from R1, single family residential to C1, light commercial for a commercial retail center. Motion to approve. Oh. 717, public hearing is now open. It's public hearing for 25 and a half. Well, this is a Mayor, we have two speakers signed up. Um, Mr. Jaime. Daniel Hernandez. Seven eighteen public hearing is now closed. Item number 26, second reading and adoption of an ordinance for the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of lots 104 and 105, Moon Edition number two, Green Plant located at 166 and 172 Moon Road from R1, single family residential to C1, light commercial for a commercial retail center. Motion to approve for um, discussion. Second. This is a rezoning request for lot one, uh, th their address is 166 and 172 Moon Road. The two lots are next to each other. 
Uh, they were asking for to rezone from R1 to C1 light commercial. According to the owner, they want to demolish the existing structures and they want to redo um, a small retail uh, shopping center. This is uh, what they have right now. So they want to demolish those old buildings and redo those. That's why they're asking for the zoning change. Uh, on the north of the property, there's uh, resident, uh, residential mobile home park. On the south, there's single family residential. To the east, there is light commercial. And to the west, there's a general commercial. This is uh, where the, there's a, the this Vista is Market, I'm sorry, thank you. <laughs> so uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission recommends approval of the C1 to allow them to establish their retail center. The owner of these properties is also the owner of the lot next, uh, next to it. So they want to establish a commercial center on, on this property here and another one over here. And they might use the middle as a parking space for both. Mr. Yeah. Perez? Mm, Mr. Perez, very quick. Uh, so this is used to be the old demo and Iteca uh, store, which by the way has very good bolitos and tortillas. Yes, sir. Um, yes, actually. Um, but, so they were running, and again, just a question. So they were operating a business when it was uh, not properly zoned, is that correct? It was incorrectly zoned. Um, it was one of those properties that were grandfathered okay. at the time of the adoption of the uh, um, Unicode or the ordinances of the city. Because they were already in operation, uh, they were allowed to continue operating. But because they've been out of business for longer than six months, like the ordinance states, then they go back to single family residential okay. zoning as the rest of the subdivision. Because I remember the gentleman, the original owner passed away. And I hope that they had this other thing. If it's going to be another burrito house that they hand out down the, <laughs> the recipe. Okay. All right, thank you. Mr. Duran? Uh, have they um, indicated what type of um, retail stores they're gonna put in there? No, sir, they just wanna, they haven't mentioned a specific type of business. They wanna, they mentioned a, a small, like uh, different suites to rent out or something like that, similar, something small. Okay, thank you. Rene Rodriguez is absent. Maria Reyes is absent. Ralph Duran? Yes. Victor Perez? Aye. And Ivan Colon Villalobos? Yes. Item number 27, public hearing of an ordinance on the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of Tract 4D1, Block 1, Socorro Grant at 1059 Coker Road from RE, Rural Estates to M1, Light Industrial for heavy equipment operation. 722, public hearing is now open. Good evening again, Ms. Mayor, Council, uh, City Administrators. I'm going to respectfully ask the council to please table this item. There's several reasons why I'm going to ask you to table this item. First and foremost, uh, the declaration, the emergency declaration with regards to the flooding in the monsoon season goes until October 1st. We have seen in the past, in late to mid-September, heavy flooding in the Coker area. In fact, in 2013, there was flooding the second and last weekend of September. So we're still not in the clear with regards to what we've seen with historical evidence to rainfall in the Socorro area. That's the first reason why I would ask you to table this item. The second reason I would ask you to table this item is because the cleanup had already begun. In fact, the I, when we first came to you before the flooding situation, there was discussion of putting cement down and then putting a roof over so that it could emulate the other areas of the city. And in fact, the Acosta family had already taken out quite a bit of that trash. I believe Mr. Pedazos can attest to that if he's allowed to. And so that process had already begun and unfortunately the incident with the flood happened and that was stalled. So with regards to how it looked when we first came here to now, it's far cleaner than it was to begin with. And I know that was an issue uh, with regards to how much machinery was there. The amount of machinery that was there in the past is no longer there. For the most part, it, it was destroyed and discarded and it was taken off. So the, the amount of trailers, the amount of tractors that had been there are no longer present. Another reason what I would ask you to respectfully table this item is um, 
we, we're still not, we're still kind of in limbo with regards to what's gonna happen to the properties. We're not sure what's happening with regards to the city and executive sessions, which you'll be discussing later. And then other options are on the table at this point. So for the Acosta family to come in and spend what would tantamount to be tens of thousands of dollars at this point seems premature considering the fact that we don't know what's gonna happen here in the near uh, future. And then lastly, I'm, I'm asking that you please table this item for the time being. Uh, again, just on the fact that we've taken a heavy financial hit. There has been outpouring by the community it, it, with regards to clothing and, and food. Um, every, everyone from members like here on the council to students at the high school coming together and helping out the families. But with regards to actually tending to the properties and the homes, that has been all personal out of savings or, or however else you're paying for it. So I'm gonna ask that for both 27 and 28 that you please consider tabling this issue. Let's get through monsoon season first, see what's gonna happen with regards to the people in that area and then revisit it in the future. Thank you. Seven twenty five public hearing is now closed. Item number 28, second reading and adoption of an ordinance on the proposed amendment to the City of Socorro Master Plan and rezoning of Track 4D1, Block 1, Socorro Grant at 1059 Coker Road from RE Rural Estates to M1 Light Industrial for Heavy Equipment Operation. I'm gonna make a motion to table and make a motion to table for discussion at this time. Postpone. Oh, Postpone. Oh, Postpone? Okay. Postpone, but we can still carry on with the uh, discussion. Yeah. Okay, postpone so. For the next point of the meeting? No, no. well, if, if I make a table, make a motion to postpone, and there's a second, then there's still, uh, we can still discuss the item. You can, but it's just right. Part of the motion should be to have a postponed dialogue. I'm sorry? Part of the motion should be to have a proposed duration. Okay. Uh, for the next point of the meeting? Okay, yeah, I apologize. So then my motion would be to uh, postpone the item uh, item number 28 until the next regular meeting. Or after monitoring right. Right. right, it would be our first meeting. All right, so the first meeting in October. Is there a second? Second. Uh, Greg, I, I do have a question right now. Uh, Mr. Terrazas, on the, in the backup, uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission denied this. Or then, and so, what was the, the basis for the denial? Um, the, the basis for the denial is because they, there's a, a number of residential properties next to it, and their concern was they didn't want to have an industrial zone too close to the residential properties. Um, but like you said, it was postponed on uh, June the 1st because this whole area is a flood zone. They're located in a flood zone. There's no doubt about that. These homes have been affected by the flooding. They're damaged pretty bad. The equipment is all, I mean, it's damaged. And the reason it was postponed is because we were gonna, or you were gonna allow them the opportunity to put a concrete slab so they can do their mechanic work or oil changes or everything that they expressed in the meeting. Um, well, that's not gonna happen. Uh, the reason is because it's in a, an area that floods so often, every time it rains, it brings down so much silt and sand that it will probably cover the slab. And one, then one more question, Mr. Terrazas. Um, if I understood you correctly, the neighbors don't want the rezoning, is that correct? Not the neighbors, the neighbors didn't express concern. Um, it was the Planning and Zoning Commission who okay. were concerned about residential. Mr. Duran? Um, Mr. Martinez, does this fall under spot zoning? <coughs> the surrounding property, there's R1 on the, all the properties on the side are R1s. On the south, there's A1, agricultural, and then there's unclassified on the east. Everything over here on the east side is unclassified, and the west is agricultural. You say residential, rural estates? Residential would be only this small portion right here. 
Everything out here is agricultural. But the current zoning is? Rural estates. Rural estates. Yes. Just a close call. Um, the problem is if you've got, if you have residential right there and it's admittedly atypical to have residential right next to industrial, um, but you've got unclassified stuff there, you know, sort of on the edge of any of the developed areas. So it's, it's hard to, I mean, when you're on the edge of a, develop, of a, a developed area where there's literally nothing, it's hard to say any investment is just spot zone because there's nothing next to it. So the, the one thing that might just even if the concern to me is your residential immediately adjacent to it. What's the other one, Joe, on, on this on the tip south? There is A1 agricultural. This property right here is single family residential. That's unusual. How many how many single family are there on Coker close to that property? I'm gonna have to view on the zoning map, please. Allow me one minute. I just don't wanna approve it late, later on and then have them come back everybody that's next door to agricultural want to put in a the mechanic property, shop the property in question is this one right here so everything that you see in yellow is single family residential everything you see here in gray is unclassified the green portions are agricultural Mr. Arthur? all I wanted to add is that the residents were actually for the rezoning just because of their heavy machinery that would help them clean the area but because of the flooding they're asking for us to postpone it until s to see what's going to happen with their property but they all of the residents and nearby uh, were actually for it at the time it was a planning and zoning that was against because there's a lot of silt coming down potential hazard And the reason for that is because the city, most of the properties are private properties and the city can go in there with machines. So that's why they were asking them to use their own machines to clean up the road. For that reason, they were for the rezoning to allow them to have the, the heavy machines because they're the ones who restore the street, basically. Yes, for the other one? Yes, for, um, for many years um, or for quite some time, uh, the owners of this pro of this property have helped the residents there uh, dig them out from whatever mishap was happening uh, during the rainy season or monsoon season. And so, I would say about six months ago or some uh, somewhere around there, um, a lot of the residents came here and said uh, that that was their only avenue to keep them safe. So. I just thought I would, would share that with the council, the new council. Uh, we're in item number 28. Oh, go ahead, Ms. Travelers. Once that emergency declaration ends, there's, we're going to go back to the legalities of city equipment not being able to go in there. And at this point, again, they will be the only ones with heavy machinery, or at least heavy machinery, that have offered to help the residents on Coker. And it is true that <coughs> we're in unison that we have no problem with them using heavy machinery. There's a recycling plant right across the canal from us and then down the road. They use heavy machinery all the time. No one's ever complained about that either. So 
we have no problem with the Abrota family doing that. And I just do want to say one last thing. <coughs> I understand it's a flood zone, but I, I do want to reiterate again that uh, the Corps of Engineers and the water storm, uh, the, the, the project, the survey they did put the blame on a levee that comes by desert wind middle school and elementary. And so it didn't become a flood zone until that time. So the flooding didn't begin until 2006. And they went ahead and identified exactly what needs to be fixed in order to keep the coast area from flooding. So <coughs> again, I don't mean in no disrespect, but when it's called a flood zone, it makes it seem as though it's been going on for years and everybody decided to move into a flood zone. I do want to reiterate it was not a flood zone until 2006. And we do have evidence from the Army Corps of Engineers and a stormwater investigation to show exactly why it's flooding and it's not due to mother nature. So thank you again, Ms. Mayor and Council for your time. Appreciate it. Yes. Uh, aye to table. I'm sorry. Table. This is for table. Yes. Item number 29, public hearing of ordinance 414, amendment to the city of Socorro master plan and rezoning of tract 4C1K, block three, Socorro Grant at 900 Horizon Boulevard from A1 Agriculture to C2 General Commercial for commercial retail use. 736, public hearing is now open. I just wanted to uh, quickly address the concern that the previous neighbor had had. Um, and on that about the tractor trailer sales, we did add the conditions that 
No junkyard mechanic or body shop shall be allowed. No tractor trailer or trailer sales shall be allowed. Because we know that it has been a concern with the neighbors and we did you know, take that into account. So we don't want to have any, um, I guess, concerns or anybody not being happy with, with that zoning. So that being said, um, you know, that's really the only issue that we've had in the past with this property. Um, and we do just want it to be general commercial. That's pretty much all I have to say. Thank you. Public hearing is now closed. Item number 30, second reading and adoption of ordinance 414, amendment to the city of Socorro master plan and rezoning of tract 4C1K, block three, Socorro Grant at 900 Horizon Boulevard from A1 Agricultural to C2 General Commercial for commercial retail use. Make a motion to approve. For decision, may I have a second? Second. second. Well, I want to clarify something. Uh, we did mail out letters to the neighbors to do a public hearing with the Planning and Zoning Commission for this case. Uh, this is the complete file, and not even one single letter came back, so we're assuming that all the letters were delivered. Um, also, this item was postponed uh, in the previous meeting because there, were, there was a the ordinance that was presented to council was not clear on the conditions that were established. Now we re redid the ordinance and now we put the conditions with bullets, very specific, that say no junkyards will be allowed, no mechanic shops, no body shops will be allowed. No tractor trailer or, or sales will be allowed in the property and a solid fence shall be installed along the residential zone. That was a request from the previous meeting. And the applicant agrees to the conditions. They submitted a letter where they agree. This is the letter that was submitted by the applicant where they agree to all the conditions. And they will only use the property for a commercial retail use. Ms. Villalobos? I, I'm sorry. I, I see here that it says ER uh, Auto and truck and tractor trailer sales proposed land use and then i look at the letter that was written by the owner and it says um, that no junkyards mechanic or body shops or trailers it does not specify tractor trailers shall be allowed within the property it might not be on the letter but it is on the proposed ordinance that uh, we're presenting to you um, can we correct that? Have um, Mr. Martinez, can we have the owner right now correct that and put tractor trailer on his letter? His well, he had. I know the ordinance says that, but his letter does not. Yeah. Uh, Mayor. Okay. Mr. Rodriguez. Okay. Yes, um, our ordinances supersede his letter, so it doesn't matter if he writes it or not. As soon as we pass it, it's done. He has to obey by it. I don't think there's no sense in, in making or forcing the gentleman to come out here and start writing it on the piece of paper. I think that we should just pass it, and then he already is aware of what he can and can't do to his property. I think he abide by it because he understands the rules, and I think that we should just move forward. I mean, this is a, a null and void, uh, you know, because we're already aware that he's already uh, subjected to, you know, writing a, a letter stating, you know, what we, what the requirements that we're asking him for, and yet to go back and ask the gentleman again to do another one, I mean, when it's no sense to defeat the purpose of having an ordinance. So since we're gonna have the ordinance, I think that that over supersedes anything he writes. So I think that, you know, we should just move on. And, and I get that. I, you know, I knew it from the beginning. It's just to have it, it's a formality to have everything clear um, from, from both sides. And I think it would make the constituent feel much more comfortable. That's all. No ill uh, towards anyone. Just.
trying to make both parties feel comfortable. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Item number 31, discussion and action to authorize the mayor, city attorney, and chief of police to sign an amended interlocal agreement for Operation Stone Garden fiscal year 2015. Make a motion to approve. Second. Aye. Yes. Aye. Yes. Item number 32, discussion and action on the conditional use permit for beer and wine for lot 6A, block 1, Horizon Shopping Center, replot A, amended plot, located at Make a 10, 750 North Loop Drive, Suite A1, to establish a bar and grill. Make a motion to approve. Second. But before we make a motion, I have a question for Jim. Jim, um, do I have to bring a separate item agenda or can I just tackle it on this one? Because the gentleman did have a, a paper that he wanted us to, uh, the city sign, so that he can take to the uh, tobacco farm and the alcohol, TABC. the TABC letter. Can I just pony off of this one or do I have to come back and say, hey, this is a separate item agenda so that the city doesn't, it, the gentleman doesn't have to wait. It says about the letter. Like All it says is that we're not a dry county. That's it, a dry city. Like Dallas. Like Dallas, you can't drink, but you gotta go, uh, in other words, if El Paso. If the letter was gonna come from city council, yes, I think you need a separate item company to say that. Yeah, but TVC just wants it from the city, not from council. But I, but I think Adriana, the city manager, can send that kind of letter just to the administration. Yes, but what I'm saying if is, it's approved, do I can send out a letter. No, 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 I know, for this one. But what I'm saying is, could I amend my motion to include any further, you know, that instead of bringing it and waiting to see if we're gonna give them the conditional use permit, all they wanna know, all they wanna know is whether we're dry or not, that's it. Because at the end of the story, if it's because of the time. That's what I'm saying. The answer, the answer is no, you can't. You need a separate okay. item. Okay. But two, I don't think that issue is going to ever come before you anyway. That's a city versus administrative item. So that's just an administrative item. So next time when a constituent comes in, she could just do it and not bring it to us and just no. sign the letter. Okay, so they're asking for a conditional use permit? No, we're not. We're, no, no. I'm saying I'm piggybacking off of that so that you can sign that letter. Yeah. She, I mean, that's a statement of fact. Sure, she can say that. Okay, so then we don't, do I need an item to bring it back? If you want to establish a policy or procedure to instruct the city manager, mm -hmm. you can. Okay, that, that, that's all I need then. That, thank you. Mr. Dunn? Uh, I've applied for a TABC license, and all we needed was the uh, conditional use permit. Everything else came from the city. We didn't need to go back and get another um, letter. All the letters, once, because once we're established that you have your, your conditional use permit, the city can write any letter they want. Yeah, and that's all he'll need. After we, if we approve it tonight, they can go tomorrow morning and get the letter from uh, our city manager stating that it is a dry, we're not a dry city. Aye. Yes. Aye, and I'm glad we're not dry. <laughs> yes. Item number 33, presentation and discussion regarding tax rate calculations, revenues, and expenditures for the City of Socorro's proposed budget for, fis for fiscal year 2018.
Mayor, City Council, I know uh, we have a couple of new members, and you didn't get to you didn't get to experience the joy of the budget, but uh, we do have the uh, included in your uh, materials is the letter from the city manager going over what the um, what the budget uh, kind of in some very general terms. Uh, we are asking to use the reserves, the budget that is included. Um, uh, in there on page one, uh, which is a, a recap of the revenues. Sir, sir. Sir, sir. Yes. Sir, I, don't have I don't either. You know what? I don't either. You know what it's on? I don't understand. I don't understand. I don't understand. Oh. Oh, okay. Yeah, At the beginning I, I went to 32 or 35. Yeah, I was on 33. Item number 10, it was part of the, uh, the ordinance. Yeah. The introduction. And because, because the rate was uh, proposed at the uh, rollback rate, we adjusted the revenues to show the rollback rate, but we're, we're, we have uh, adopted the, the, the current rate, and we're, we're gonna have to adjust the revenues accordingly for that, and which will increase the prior year's revenue uh, use of the uh, reserve uh, significantly from, from the 472 to closer to a million dollars for, for the next fiscal year. Second.